What if I told you that you're not living up to your potential? And I don't mean making a bunch of money, getting that job that your parents want you to. I mean your social potential, your ability to spread love just by talking to others, going and approaching strangers you don't know and starting a conversation with them. Asking your friends, hey man, what's that thing that you really need help on? Maybe I can help you out with it. Going and talking to that girl that you have a crush on because no other guy has the balls to go and talk to her. That could be you. And obviously this is all going to feel good for you because as humans, our core desire is to get love and intimacy. These are chemicals in our brain, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine. These get released when we interact with other humans. And I think that the problem is nowadays, everybody is so selfish that they want to feel good themselves, but they don't realize that you feel amazing when you make other people feel good. Life and all the interactions we have are very transactional, but you shouldn't look at this as a bad thing, right? You should look at this as a positive thing. If I provide value to others, if I can help them out with something, if I can listen to them, if I can spend time with them, it makes them feel good. And this makes you feel good. And I have successfully rewired my dopamine so that instead of getting pleasure from video games, junk food, being by myself, going on YouTube all day, I don't get pleasure from any of that. Now I get pleasure from spending time with other humans in real life, spending time with an attractive girl that I can go on fun adventures with, have sex with and date, bring her around to places, you know? Now I have fun when I go to kickboxing and I'm holding pads for somebody else. I'm telling them, hey man, you know, hit it this way, right? Good job, good job, nice combo, right? When me and my friends hang out once a week and we go for half price wings and we just shoot the shit, I have retrained myself to get love and good feedback and feel good when I'm around other people. And I wanna teach you how to do the same thing. But in order to do this, you might have to become a hero in your own movie. Right now you're on the hero's journey, right? You know, the mid beginning of the movie, life's rough, just got fired from work, no girl likes you, you're broke, your dad's yelling at you. You're at the part that you've seen in the movie theaters a million times, but you're on the journey to become the hero. So by the end of the movie, you have to solve your own problem, but you realize it's not actually about you. It was about the journey along the way. It was about solving everybody else's problem. And this is what it's like to be a hero. So in this video, we're going to talk about the hero's complex, how you can adapt it to improve your life, but also improve the lives of everybody else. And dare I say, save the lives of everybody else. It's going to be one of those videos. So let's get into it. I had a pretty messed up childhood. I think it's obvious by the fact that I act the way I do. But uh, something about having a weird childhood actually turns you into a very unique individual. Most of the comedians, artists, actors, musicians that you watch, they all had a pretty weird childhood. And that led to them essentially having a really weird algorithm as they developed. And what I mean by this is like, think about your very basic, simple human being. They wake up, go to school, come home, go to church on weekends, they get a job at a factory, and they retire at 65 years old, and they raise a family. You know what I mean? It's like very simple cookie cutter person. But then once you start to change a couple of those elements, everything gets drastically thrown off course. The kid has to move. He goes to a different school. He's not as confident because he has to start over, gets bullied, starts to hate school, starts to go home. Maybe he goes on the internet, starts playing video games because now he has something to do with other people that doesn't involve interacting in real life. And then that becomes like what you do as you're growing and developing and your brain is now wired to seek a novelty dopamine exclusively from video games as opposed to socializing with people in real life. That's just one example. I'm sure you have your own. But essentially, whatever happens to us in childhood, whether it's traumatic, whether it's a good thing, maybe like a positive experience happened in your childhood, whatever it is, that's kind of what influences you as you become an adult. And that's why you choose the path that you're on right now. Now, hopefully you have chosen your path as opposed to it being chosen for you. Because when it comes down to it, bro, there are two things that influence your life, nature and nurture, your genetics and the environment you grew up in. Think about a world-class boxer. Why are they such a good boxer? Are you saying that they couldn't be a world-class doctor? They couldn't be a world-class musician? 
what happened was in childhood, at some point, they started boxing. The vast majority of professional athletes have been playing that sport since they were like 13 years old, if not younger. So their dopamine system has been set up so that they get rewarded each time they play this. So I want you to imagine this, right? You're 14 years old. Maybe you don't really have any friends at school, but your dad, he's always listening to classic rock music and he encourages you to learn how to play a musical instrument. So on your birthday, he saves up some money and he buys you a guitar. So now you have a guitar. Holy shit. You go on YouTube, you look up videos, you know, download some tabs. How do I play guitar? You're playing guitar. You practice every night and you actually get pretty good. And then at the talent show at high school, you play the guitar. You play like a one minute guitar thing or something. Everybody cheers. Holy shit, Johnny. We didn't know you were so good at guitar. Now you start posting photos of your guitar on Instagram. People like it. They're like, oh man, do you have music? Can I listen to it? Next thing you know, that's your identity. You're the guy that plays guitar. And then you graduate high school and you have to decide, what do I want to do? Do I want to go to school to be, you know, what my parents want me to be? A fucking accountant? Or fuck it, I'm going to go to school to be a guitarist. And then you go to school for music or, you know, whatever your interest is, right? And you realize you can't really make a living doing it. So you're essentially going in debt for four years with something that's probably not going to make you money, but it's your passion. And you're told by people, hey, follow your passion. You know why? Because they also went to university. And university is a fucking business. So of course they're going to tell you, yeah, bro, look, fucking this one guy 50 years ago got a job in your program. Yeah, he teaches here now. <laughs> you know, so that's a whole other discussion. But you go through this process and then you get out of school. You're in debt. You have this thing you're really good at. That's your whole identity. But you need to find another way to make money. So you either grind your ass off and become at the highest level of that thing you're passionate about. So let's say it's guitar, right? Maybe you do become a world-renowned guitarist that performs. You're in a heavy metal band. You tour the world. You actually make a living doing it. But that's like the top 1%. Most likely, you're just going to have that as a hobby. But that is your identity. That is your status. And you work another job that you don't really care about so that when you're done work, you can play guitar. Okay? That's your whole thing. Now, I hope you followed along with this analogy, but this essentially is how your purpose is decided. But what happens is we find a purpose, but we still have universal themes throughout our life, okay? Family, friendship, intimacy with a woman, having children, going to church or religion or whatever it is. There's a certain sport we enjoy watching because in high school, you watched it with your friends, right? So as much as you do have a purpose, you come to a point where now that you do know what your purpose is, you know what your path is, there's other things to life. Obviously, when you're really passionate about something, you're going to remain passionate about it the rest of your life. But until you find that passion, you don't know what that thing is. So you're constantly scrambling and searching for it. Now, in the meantime, you're also horny as fuck. So you're trying to bang girls. You're downloading dating apps. You're going and trying to talk to girls in your class, but you have no charisma. You don't know how to socialize. So you're getting friend zoned constantly. And I know this is an issue that a lot of guys suffer with. So I actually created a course called Socializer School, which you can check out in the description below. It teaches you how to be a socializer so that guys want to hang out with you, girls want to hang out with you, and you can approach and attract girls in real life, go on dates with them, and get a girlfriend in like 60 days. So I put all that together in a program. Check it out in the description below. But you have all these different things you're focusing on as a young man, right? You're trying to get girls to like you. You're trying to be popular at school. You're trying to find out what your passion is. You also need to make money. You need independence from your parents and your house. It's such a fucking time. And right now, you might not be enjoying it. You might be like really hard on yourself. Like, oh, fuck. I wish life was easy. Like, I feel so much pressure from my family. School's really hard. I wish girls liked me more. But you feel this way because you're learning and you're going through that process so that you can appreciate it once you succeed at it. It's a necessary step that every young man has to go through. And once you go through it and you're on the other side, you understand how powerful it is. It's worth something. It's like climbing a mountain versus walking up a set of stairs in your house. Yeah, the action is the same, like you're just walking upwards. But the hill, the mountain that you conquer, the bigger it is, the more worthwhile it is. So if you're suffering right now and you're having a hard time with your purpose, just remember that, bro. It's supposed to be hard. That's what makes it fun. Now, what eventually happens, though, is you get to a point where you've solved your dating problem, 
you've solved your gym problem, right? You're getting in good physical shape. You are healthy. Your mental health is good. You've solved your business problem because you've solved your money problem because you've gotten a good job, whether it's working for somebody else or you've started your own business and you have a hobby, you have a purpose, you have something that takes up your time. The next logical thing a man does is get into a serious relationship so that he can settle down and start a family. This involves splitting on a house or, you know, if you make enough money on your own, buying your own house and then the girl moves in with you and then you kind of decide, all right, if we have kids, can we afford this? What kind of school do we want them to go to? You know, are your parents around to help take care of the kids while you're at work? If both of you guys are working, there's a couple of things you have to think about, right? But essentially being a parent, having children is you are now a mentor for somebody else. You're bringing this new person into the world. And I think that every man and woman has the potential to be a parent, obviously, but essentially you're now a teacher. You're now a hero. You're now helping somebody that doesn't know anything. Now, what's happening nowadays is that men aren't succeeding with their purpose. They're not making enough money to settle down. They aren't getting the same dating results that men in the previous generations have because it's a lot more difficult. So because of this, all of us have this kind of unintentional baby fever to help other people. Or maybe you don't, maybe I just do. And that's kind of what the theme of today's video is, the hero complex, why I feel the need to save everybody. Here's what my theory is. A lot of girls have baby fever where their body is essentially telling them since the age of like 20 or even younger than that sometimes, like you need to have kids. You need to have kids. Why aren't you having kids, right? They have periods, they have hormonal balances, you know, a lot of birth control and shit's fucking everything up. But genetically, the best time to have children is, yeah, early 20s, okay? Now, men, we stay fertile longer. So it's a little bit different, but after a certain age, our sperm quality decreases. I think the age is like 35, 40. So it's actually similar for men and women. The only difference is women are mostly valuable based on their beauty to men anyways, in their twenties. So that's the best time to have kids, right? Men, we don't become valuable till our thirties. So we have a lot more time. And also modern marriage is pretty fucked up. Like the laws are very, very dangerous for men. And that's a whole other video, but less people are having kids, right? But I have a theory that as a man, once you've sorted out every other issue you have in your life, you know, you can get girls, you're in good physical shape, you have your own place and you have a job and income. Now what? Right. This is where people get depressed. They get like midlife crises. This is where your body is kind of telling you the same thing, bro. You should have kids, too. And it's hard to argue with like a guy that says like, oh, men don't have baby fever. It's like, bro, your body's telling you to nut all the time. What does nutting do? having a baby. <laughs> Essentially, that's what nutting is. You're putting your sperm in somebody so that they can give birth to your child. That's all guys are being told to do constantly. But because we're not the ones that birth the child from our body, we don't necessarily feel that same connection with the child as women do. Okay. Obviously I'm not a father, but you know what I mean? It is a little bit different. So I've gotten to a point though, where I don't necessarily want to have children right now, but for the last couple of years, I have felt this need to save everybody else. And I've been trying to understand myself, right? Like, is this because I want kids? Is this because I feel like modern people are stupid and they need help? Is this because when I was younger, there was nobody there to help me? I've been trying to put the pieces together, so to speak. And I wanted to create this video to share that the hero complex, the thing I have, it's a great power. It does come with a lot of responsibility, but I wouldn't change it for the world, bro. Like I'm one young man and I don't necessarily think about success this way, but like, I don't have anybody around me telling me, Jack, you're doing a great job. You know, I have like one or two people maybe, and I don't read the comments and pay attention to the positive ones. I only pay attention to the negative ones, which I wish I didn't, but I'll make a video like this and I'll have some guy and he'll be like, no, that's not true. Like, no girl will like me or like my life's over. And I'll just argue over and over again with them. You know, you know, those guys in the comments that just like are making excuses and complaining and their entire life is just watching videos. I will go in there and I will fight them for hours because I'm trying to turn them around. I don't know why I care. I've always had this issue where I have tried to save people that can't save themselves. And <laughs> a couple of years ago, funny story. I was in the United States 
And this homeless dude and this guy in a car got into a big argument. Like they're in a parking lot and the car almost hit the homeless dude. So he starts screaming at the guy in the car. The guy in the car pulls over, opens the door and they start talking shit to each other. Homeless guy starts walking over. Homeless guy reaches into his sock and pulls a blade out. And the guy in the car doesn't see this. I run over, I get in between them. I'm like, guys, don't fight. You know, it's all good. Just go your own fucking direction. I went in there to break the fight up. The guy in the car, he was armed. He was going to pull a gun on this guy. Okay, it was an open carry state. So I essentially put myself into the middle of a fight where I could have been stabbed, could have been shot. For two people, I literally did not even know. And based on the first impression I got of them, both of them were assholes, <laughs> you know? This homeless dude's fucking slamming his bike in the parking lot. This dude in his car is like pulling over, threatening to kill some guy over nothing, right? I instantly went over and it was like my instinct to just separate these guys, okay? And I'm just thinking, you know, all the times I've stood up for myself and confronted people in my life, that probably would have got me fucking killed a thousand years ago. I would have been that guy that stood up to the wrong person and got stabbed or jumped. Like in high school, I got into this big fight with some kid from another school. I beat the fuck out of him. But then I got jumped afterwards by all his friends. So it didn't even matter, you know, if I won the fight or not. But I think it's like an evolutionary thing. There's like this stubbornness. There's like this uh, need to be a leader. I don't know if it's testosterone based, like my test levels are pretty high, but it's got to be some kind of psychological thing. You know, maybe the only way I feel big is by getting approval from others, right? This is something a lot of self-improvement content creators won't admit, but a lot of us are fucking insecure, bro. Musicians, artists, actors, insecure as fuck. We need to get attention from other people. Alex Armosi always talks about this, you know, the three qualities of the most successful people people. Narcissism. They think that they should be in charge. They know better than everybody else. They have a chip on their shoulder. They have a major insecurity. They have to prove other people wrong. And impulse control. They can stay focused on a task. They can cut out bad habits so that they can get all the work done. Because there's plenty of really successful, talented musicians that are narcissists, and they also have a chip on their shoulder. They make amazing music, but they have no impulse control. They're addicted to substances, and they never make it anywhere, right? So I've always been good at like not being addicted to alcohol or substances, but for a long time, I was addicted to food, junk food. And I looked up some of the psychological reasons why people would be addicted to junk food. And a lot of it is due to loneliness. When you eat junk food, it releases chemicals in your body that kind of numb you. They relax you. You know, like a food coma where you eat so much food, you just feel like, oh, you know, on the couch. Each night, subconsciously, I didn't even realize this, but I was lonely. So I would just binge eat all this food so that I felt love, that I felt intimacy. And one of the things I replaced that with was helping other people. Because at a certain point in my life, I think it was around the age of like 24, I realized life isn't about me anymore. It's about everybody else, you know? And once you realize that, it totally changes the way you look at things. When I leave my house now, I always try to talk to strangers. I ask them how they're doing. I make them smile. I make them laugh. All of my videos where I'm doing pranks and interviews, I'm trying to provide value by making people feel good. These videos right now, I know that they don't get as many views as certain videos I've done in the past, but I know that the right person watches this and it motivates them. It gets them to actually take action and change their life. And the reason I tell you guys, you know, you should be socializing, you should be making friends, building friend groups is because this is your real support system. You shouldn't have to rely on YouTube videos for motivation. You should have friends in real life that have your back. I want you to experience what it's like to meet an amazing, gorgeous, attractive girl, go and talk to her, have an amazing conversation with her. Your heart's beating out of your fucking chest, but on the surface, you're acting cool. And then you ask her out on a date, you get her phone number, you guys go out on an adventure. You have some amazing, mind-blowing sex. You're sleeping over at each other's houses. It's like that early honeymoon phase of the relationship. And this girl's amazing. And you guys go, you know what? Fuck it. This summer, let's do a road trip across the country. Let's go to fucking Europe and hike a mountain. You guys are traveling together, pumping loads on her. Like, she's so hot too, you know? I want you to experience that. And at this point, it's not even about the girl. It's about you, bro. That's my point. Like, the reason I made a program is so that you have the choice, that you have the option. You have control over your own social skills. Because when you're a socializer, you can approach and attract girls. You no longer talk yourself out of it. You no longer have the stupid impulse control or lack of impulse control to go on dating apps like, duh, duh, right? I want you to experience sex with a girl. 
so that you can get through it and realize it's not a big deal. So that now you can work on your purpose. Now you can find a way to make money online. Like me, for example. The whole reason that people watch my videos is because I'm a good speaker. I'm a good communicator. I'm a socializer. That's what being a socializer is. And I just realized that a couple months ago. I made all these videos on how to get girls by using social skills, how to make friends, right? But most of you want to find a way to make money online. I'm not going to brag, but I make a stupid amount of money. Way more than I did when I was in the trades. Way more than I did when I was running a property management business. Just from being a socializer, being able to talk to a camera. And we live in a unique time where you can literally become a YouTuber, make a full-time living, actually more money than most of the people in your country. All you need is a camera and an interesting story to tell. Things to talk about. When you're a good communicator, you can make money. So in my socializer school, I now have created a YouTube course that teaches you how to build a YouTube channel, how to get 100,000 followers. I think I got this channel 200,000 followers in a year. How to make hundreds of thousands of dollars by being yourself, bro. Just talking to the camera, being interesting to listen to. That is the thing when you're a socializer. You can make people pay attention to you. Whether you're at a car dealership and you want to sell cars to make money, or you want to make friends at the gym so you have a tribe of bros you can hang out with and work out with together, or if you want to go approach and attract that gorgeous girl, go on a date with her, have sex with her, make her your long-term girlfriend. It all starts with being a socializer. That's my point, all right? Now, once I realized that I had this skill that I take for granted, something I've had for a long time, whether it was because of my fucked up childhood or all the experiences and things I've done in my life, even though I'm a young man, I wanted to share it with everybody else because I realized life isn't about me, it's about everybody else. And there's so many young men struggling with this. So yes, I do have a hero complex and I think that you should have a hero complex too. I think you should want to save everybody else as well. Because when you've been through the shit that I have, you know the stakes of what's going on in life. Like, bro, you don't realize this, but like if you continuously fuck up, procrastinate, and do the wrong things, you're going to miss out on an amazing life. And if you miss out on life, how are you going to help anybody else? That's the point, man. I think all of us should have a hero complex. So... One thing I want you to do from now on is go out of your way to talk to people. I want you to leave your house, compliment people, smile, go and make a friend group, and then organize meetups each week. And if you want to know how to do this, but you can't afford Socializer School, I made a free mini course. It's called the Socializer Protocol. Basically, I have some worksheets you fill out. You can print them, hang them up on your wall, and then each day you can tick off like your daily socialization. Oh, I talked to five people today. I did my workout today. I did my cold shower today. And it's fun. It's like a game. You actually want to check these off. And this makes self-improvement and getting your life together, improving your mental health, etc. Turns it into a fun video game in real life. And that's in the description below too. So you go below the paid community, you go to the free community. And it's, you know, it's an hour too long. The paid community has all the good stuff. But I'm just saying, you know, if, if money is an issue for you right now, I have this free guide for you as well. And then one day you go through it, you get the results and you're like, holy fuck, Denmo's amazing. I'm going to buy the paid community right? So the point I'm making is like hero complexes are a gift. If you feel like you want to help others, this is a gift. You do need to help others. And if you haven't experienced this yet, I'm telling you it's the best thing in the world because one, when you help other people, it forces you to be accountable to yourself. So I can't give you advice unless I do it myself. I can't tell you to work out unless I work out. So the fact that I tell you guys to do all these things means I have to do them too. So that's one bonus. That's why I love it. But two, when you're ever feeling down, you can instantly turn that mood around by helping somebody else. Here's the best example I can give. You're having a really bad day. Your girlfriend broke up with you. You got fired from your job. Your parents are yelling at you. You're out of shape. You're miserable. You're feeling like ending everything, okay? You go to the grocery store to buy a fucking chocolate bar or whatever. Some old lady collapses in front of you. She falls over instantly. You jump next to her. Oh my God, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? She's like crying. She's moaning. She hurt herself. You'd instantly call for help. You get an ambulance to show up. You help the old lady up, get her on the stretcher. She goes to the hospital. You know, that entire time, you're not even going to think about your own problems. You're only thinking about her. Okay. That's the point. When you're present in the moment, helping other people, all of a sudden you feel good again. You feel like a human again. So the hero complex, it sounds narcissistic, but this could actually save your life. I encourage you, 
to solve your own problems, but also solve the problems of others. Help people out, volunteer, start conversations with strangers. Whenever you talk to an old person, they tell you their life story. Why? Because nobody talks to them. Their family doesn't talk to them. People look at them like they're a fucking different species just because they're in their 60s or 70s. You have so much power that you don't realize. And once you start talking to people, you start socializing, you're using the socializer protocol, you know, you know how to go to talk to people in public and you have like a social circle you go to each week. You're going to realize how powerful it is just by communicating with others because the ultimate good feeling in the world is human intimacy, love. And we share love by speaking to one another. Okay. And I want you to experience that. And I want you to help others experience that too. So that is what your mission is. You don't have to be a hero. You don't have to have the hero complex, but you need to start socializing. And if you want to learn how to do that, you can join my free community to get access to the socializer protocol. Or if you are really looking to get high level social skills to make money online as a YouTuber, go and approach girls, get a girlfriend in like 30, 60 days, start social circles, just like really high level dating results. You can join my paid community socializer school. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.